Hey, Diana. And Paul Jenkins, I see you there. Lucretia, I see you. Hello, hello, hello. It's Wednesday night. Yeah, you have to. No, I got it. Welcome to Wednesday. 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 Welcome to Good to have you guys on. Hola, Nilda. Hola. Woohoo. Hello from Armando and Rosa. Hello, hello. Good to have you on. Woohoo. Yay. You're going to have to testify, Armando. That's awesome. Promotion, promotion, promotions. For sure, for sure. Yes. Well, you guys are ready for a good word tonight? Hey, Tiffany. Great word tonight. Two minutes ago, I was still writing down scriptures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, you can pray. Yes, I can pray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for all those that are watching and those that will watch in the future. Lord, I ask that you would guide our words. Lord, that it would bring life to the hearer. And Holy Spirit, we just welcome you on this broadcast that you would just have your presence ever so strong in homes right now, in cars, wherever they might be tuning in, maybe some are just listening in the workplace, or just bless everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. We want to talk tonight about honor and uh, honoring uh, one another. And uh, so I, uh, it's been stirring for the last couple of days. And uh, so in in uh, second First Peter chapter two, First Peter chapter two. Uh, starting in uh, verse, well, verse nine says, we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And, uh, you know, we look back at it when we started and, and when we first got saved, uh, we were all lost at one point. We didn't know God. And God in his mercy reached out to us and transformed our life. Apostle Daryl, good to see you, brother. And uh, so, so uh, I think we have to be careful that once we get saved, that we put ourselves in a little box and we don't have mercy or grace for people outside of our box, okay? And uh, it goes on, it says, Beloved, I beg you to, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, that they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. We're supposed to live our life in such a way that, that it's not just our words that, that speak, it's the way we live. It's our life. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then over here in verse uh, uh, 17, it says, Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. The Amplified says, show respect for all men, treat them honorably, love the brotherhood, the Christian fraternity of which Christ is the head, reverence God, and honor the emperor. And so uh, I believe that, that uh, 
we can get challenged in this. And uh, man, if this past year hasn't been a uh, a year in which uh, some of those things could get challenged in your life and and uh, get tested in your life, you know, Apostle Darrell was talking about temptations and testings and and trials, and uh, you know, we we've all been tested. Okay, the good thing is, if we pass the test, we get to take it again. Amen. And so, and uh, over in Luke chapter ten. Mm. You mean if we passed it? If we fail the test, we get to take it again. Okay. Did I say pass the test, we get to take it again? Uh-huh. Well, you get tested again. Anyhow, yeah, so. in something else, don't we? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's called promotion. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Mm. But uh, a couple other things to do with dealing with mercy. In Romans uh, 5, 6, it says, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. And in verse 8 of Romans 5, it says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so uh, sometimes when we, we look at other people that may, you know, they, they may not be saved at all. They may be saved, but uh, may not have the grace of God has what worked in their life to the degree that it may have worked in your life. But you got to remember, sometimes you've been saved a lot longer, different opportunities, but you can't, you can't cut people off or or say there there's you can't honor them or or try to encourage them or help them too soon. I mean, look at look at Saul who became Paul. Okay? He was he was going around arresting Christians, okay? And bringing them to the Colosseum and they were they became lion bait, okay? Was he doing a great thing? No, it was terrible. But God saw something in him and God had an encounter with him that transformed his life. Amen. And so you have to remember that that just because someone doesn't see the things exactly like you might see it or I might see it, but it's like by, and, and we can say, well, I'm just going to cut that person off or I'm, I'm going to stay away from them. Well, you have to be careful because could it be that God would have you be around them to show them and 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 help teach them and train them to where they may learn something that that they wouldn't have learned any other way, okay? And and so it's by the way we treat people, okay? When you start cutting people off, you're just gonna make them angrier and bitter, okay? But when you, you're supposed to have some forbearance with one another, amen? amen. And so we need, to, we need to really not shut people off or, or cut them off too soon, let me say that. Don't cut them off too soon because, you know, we can be quick to judge someone and say, no, 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 not going to work. But God says, wait and see what I'm going to do with them. Because look what he did with, with Saul, who became Paul. I mean, he wrote two thirds of the New Testament. No one else can say that. Come on. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's take that into the family realm. Maybe that would help you understand that say you have a loved one that isn't saved or maybe is saved but has a tendency to be very religious or that's what it, we mean by may not see things the way that you see it. And so we have to have some humility about us and like he said, forbearance that um, now if they are uh, not causing you to sin, um, you can't cut people off. You can, uh, you can limit your time, but you can't ever, so say it's your mother, say it's your brother, you can't ever say, they are not my family. You can't ever say that. And so God really uses these situations in our lives to say, do I really love? Do I really love? Mm -hmm. This is a time... There I go again. This is a time, dear. Times. The time in Christianity where our love is growing and should be growing and we should have an understanding of a broader perspective of people and their lives and where they've come from and just a greater compassion. And if you come in that you're a big know-it-all, 
and you understand. I, I don't think that that's true humility, do you? I don't think so. And so we cannot cut people off. We are in covenant relationship with our brothers and sisters. Now, um, because I've, I feel like we have family, we have family in the church, we have extended family, brothers and sisters, and then there's brothers and sisters in Christ that we have no connection with, so on and so forth. But, you know, I just want you to realize that you just can't cut people off, right, honey? That yeah. God is using these situations in our lives to test us in our love. Do I love you regardless of whether that you think like me, that you talk like me, act like me? We were talking about this the other day, you know, that um, you can't have a church that we all think alike. The foundation is Jesus. And we're not all That's, clones. And we're not all clones. Mm -hmm. Thank God. That would be boring. <laughs> it sure would be. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, what she's talking about is in Matthew 5, Jesus said in verse 43, You've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. And most of us don't take this next verse. We don't underline, or highlight, underline it or highlight it. But it says, I say to you. So Jesus is saying to us, love your enemies. What? Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if, lo if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, why do, what, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. And so when we talk about love and, and, and we need the love of God because the, it's the love of God that loves your enemies. You can't do it out of yourself. We can't do it out of our own self, okay? We need the love of God, which sees value in the other person, okay? They sees value in who they are, potential for them to become something that they aren't right now, okay? And we can have a part and maybe just a small part in encouraging them, maybe just being nice to them, helping them, and see them change for the better, amen? Amen. All right. Okay, over in uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 and verse 25. This is the parable of the Good Samaritan. And it says, Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Mm. And he said to him, you've answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. The lawyer wanted to justify himself. So he said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? Did you ever ask that question? Who's my neighbor? Okay. And Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down the road and when he saw him, he realized that he didn't go to his church. So he passed, passed him on the other side. <laughs> also a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked got on his cell phone and began to check his social media and Facebook posts to see if he thought like him and if they were kindred spirit. Found out he wasn't, and so he passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I come again, I'll repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. 
And then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. You know, it's, it's sometimes we go, well, I, I want to, can I handpick my neighbors? We can't. We can't handpick our neighbors. We have to realize that, that God puts us around people and he puts things in us, okay? God's spirit lives inside of us. The, the love that God puts in us and the grace and the mercy that he puts in us by his spirit, that we can, we can share that with other people by being nice and kind or, or just saying something nice, okay? You know, there, there's things we can do and so we need to really, really be watchful on what happens to us, around us, okay? We got opportunities to do some great things. I was doing a little research, and, and I think many people have heard of uh, Bill Wilson. He's a pastor. Uh, he founded Metro Ministries, which now is Metro World Child. Hmm. When... Bill Wilson was 12 years old. He was abandoned on the street corner by his mother. Mm. He waited for three days for her to come back. She never came back. Mm. A Christian man happened to come along and he said, are you okay? The Christian man was on the way to the hospital to visit his son that was in the hospital. And he said, son, are you all right? And he talked to him and he, he got him some food because he hadn't eaten. And he ended up, paying for him to go to a Sunday school camp. And so he goes to this Sunday school camp and hears the message of the gospel for the first time. The first time. He goes to the altar and he gets down on his face and he crying out to God. You remember he had been on the street for days and other people wouldn't come around him and he goes, my mother doesn't want me, neither do these Christians want me but God did a work in his life. He now has a ministry where he ministers to thousands of kids every week. Thousands, okay? He had experienced something and God put a vision in him and a love in him to go do it to all those other kids. Feed them, take care of them, encourage them. And the thing was, he was the founder, but he was never too big that he couldn't drive a bus. He would drive the bus sometimes, okay? Great man. And so, you know, he... <laughs> there's so much that people could do just in little things, okay? But we've got to get over the stuff that causes us to divide, separate, and pull back uh, from people just because we have a difference of opinion on something. I don't think that that Jesus wants us to do that, okay? Uh, Amen. You just, maybe by you being around someone, there's two things can happen. You can, you can maybe learn something that you didn't know first about that other person. So true. But also about why they think the way they are. And, and listen, people don't want to hear what you have to say until they know that you really care about them. There you go. Okay. And so whenever, whenever someone, you become friends with someone and you can discover, well, I've got a little differences on something and da, 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 da. But maybe, maybe the reason that they think that way is because they don't have the insight that you have on some things. And they may have some insight on some things that you don't have. Come on. Okay? And so I think this is a real test for the body of Christ to be, to be bigger on the inside mm -hmm. and to be able mm -hmm. to have differences of opinion and still say, you know what? You're my brother, you're my sister, I still love you, okay? Uh, I may not fully understand your position or you've got, you've got a different viewpoint and, and you don't know what their story is necessarily until you get to know them on why they think the way they think, okay? I got up this morning and, 
And the scripture that says that Jesus said, you make the word of God of no effect by your traditions. And it was Come like on, the man. Holy Spirit spoke that to me this morning and I'm going, whoa, what's up with this? And he said, he said to me, he says, some people can't really love because their tradition keeps them from loving people because their tradition says those people are different. We need to stay away from them. Okay. Some traditions we were brought up where we were taught certain things and believe certain things. You never deviated from it. And, and that can stop you from having the love of God, having a, the word of God, have an effect on you to where the love of God flows out of you to others in need. Yes. Just, it's just, I mean, I, I was just like, wow. I had never looked at it that way. Mm -hmm. But our traditions can do a lot of things. You know, we can be traditionally, when it comes to politics, traditionally, you know, one family, we're all always Republican, voted Republican, never voted anything else. Other families were all Democrat, voted Democrat, Okay. And, and they, have, they had the reasons why they did it. They believed it. But you have to look, is it your tradition? And it's canceling out God's counsel, God's word to you, to where you, you know, you're bigger than that. Amen? Amen? We're bigger than that. Glory to God. Amen. You know, I just feel the compassion of God right now, dear. Like my heart is broken. Can you imagine when God looks down and sees what he sees? I think it breaks his heart. We sing that song, I want to know your heart, Lord. You know, mm -hmm. I want to know your heart. It's just like I, can, I get to know you and I know what you love and I know what you don't like. And, and as we get to know the Lord and we understand and we can see from a different perspective that of how much he loves everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, he loves the differences. Get back into your Bible, folks, about the body, that we're, we're not all an eye. We're not all the mouth. We're not all a foot. And, and where we must appreciate all the different parts. And so the ones that we see are the vocal, usually, and we think that that's the part that should have the honor when he says even the, the modest parts receive double honor. Mm -hmm. uh, I think those are like the intercessors. I like to think that. <laughs> but um, the compassion of God. So Father, right now in Jesus' name, the conviction of the Holy Spirit right now, Lord, touch our hearts Touch our hearts. Forgive us for sectarianism. Forgive us for um, separating. Forgive us for opinions, which causes strife, the scripture says. Forgive us, Lord. And bring healing into the body. Healing into the body of Christ. Healing into leaders. Give pastors wisdom and insight on how to lead their flock in Jesus' name. And we just receive the forgiveness of God right now. Just let it wash over us and see from a different perspective. Mm. Amen. Isaiah 50 in chapter 4, it said, The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him, him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. You know, the Lord can give us the tongue of the learned, but if we're just separating from people and don't want to really love people and share in love and being truthful and honest and respectful and honoring, then he's not going to give you the wisdom and everything 
that he, he doesn't give you stuff like that so you can put it on the shelf and say, look at my library, okay? He gives it to you so you can share it with others, okay? We have a treasure in, in the earthen vessels that the excellence of the power can be a God of God and not of us. And so he gives us opportunities to help others, amen? You know, and like Daryl grant us wisdom. Yeah, we need wisdom. We need wisdom. We need insight on how to uh, maneuver in, 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 in a real, genuine way to really help people, okay? Help people. And it's like, just because you believe this or just because you voted this way, you know, well, let's, let's not break fellowship over that. Let's, let's gather together and try to do the best we can with what we agree with. Okay, and you might go along and you might find out, well, maybe I need to lighten up a little bit on that and, and I can adjust this and, and help that. Amen. Make it a little better. Hallelujah. Amen. I love that, dear. It's, it all boils down to Jesus Christ, our foundation. Come on. And is he in our lives and well and living? Where we do not react, we act, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And love above all things. It's not a cheap love. It's not a cheap love. He, when he went to the cross, it was not cheap. But he gives us the grace and that divine ability to love people and to love them well. In uh, Matthew 10, verse 40, it says, He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. It's the little things that we can do that become big things. Mm. It's the little things that, that we can reach out to help other people. Amen? It's mm -hmm. good. In Romans. I just keep getting this picture of a family again. And the parents, the mom and dad, when they... Um, you know, are overseeing their family and the, the brothers and sisters, they're not getting along. They're, they're doing a little bit of something and, and, um, you know, and there are days when they do love each other and things like that. It's good, but the parents watch over. And first of all, they, they watch over to see, are they going to figure this out on their own? Or do I have to intervene and uh, be a coach? <laughs> and I feel like the Holy Spirit, um, the Trinity, is watching over us as the body of Christ and going, are you guys going to get it? <laughs> are, you, um, are you going to get it? Or am I going to have to get in there, which he is in there, and figure this all out and discipline some of us? embrace, you know? Well, I think we all are. I think the whole body of Christ is being disciplined. <laughs> yep. But but you see it from that different from that perspective of Father God looking out over us as a family and when you're arguing and fighting, it, it, there's not harmony in the family, is there? Right. It's not fun. And right. so the Lord is just helping us tonight. <laughs> He, he's, uh, he's gone deeper. Shoo, yeah. He's gone deeper. And I know years ago I read the, the verse about love your enemies, and I'm going, man, I don't know. You know, I don't know if I can do that. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. He gives us the ability, all right? In Romans 12, verse 9, it says, let love be without hypocrisy meaning let it be sincere. 
abhor or regard with disgust what is evil and cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Think of others as worthy more than you, okay? It says, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continually steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Did, is that crossed out in your Bible? Is it still there? <laughs> rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. You know, that's a great verse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. It's like Armando called me the other day to tell me he got a promotion at work. It was awesome. We were ready to jump up in the restaurant and just dance. Woo Glory. Woo okay. It was so fun. See, sometimes when someone gets to something like that and they go, well, how come I didn't get it? it could be your attitude. <laughs> okay. Start, start honoring people and loving people and rejoicing because something happens in their life. You're going to have more joy in your life, which is going to turn some things around for you too. Yes. Amen. Yes. So rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those with weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. <clears throat> mm. Ouch. <laughs> Do not be wise in your own opinion. Wow, I love that, dear. What What is that scripture? I'm going to write it down. Romans for... twelve sixteen. Romans twelve. 16. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Wow, I love that. Mm. Is that in the King James? That's New King James. Verse 17 says, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you. Depends on who? Me. Us. As much as depends on you, if possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men that think just like you. <laughs> it doesn't say that. It says with all men. With all men. Jesus said you, that the world will know us by our love for one another. He will, the world will know us by our love. Amen. Mm -hmm. It says, beloved, do not avenge yourself in verse 19, but rather give place to wrath. What is written, vengeance is mine, I'll repay. And so he says, if your enemy's hungry, feed him. Doesn't say if your enemy's hungry, defriend him. Feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For so in doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Mm -hmm. Do not overcome do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Glory to God. I like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. This went a little different than I thought it was going to tonight. <laughs> Doesn't it every week, honey? <laughs> this is so good. Yeah, this is the gospel, huh, Marilyn? Yeah, to love the Lord thy God with all my heart, with all thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. How would you want to be treated? Philippians 2, verse 1. It says, Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if there's any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy. Okay? Mm -hmm. Consolation in Christ. Comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, if there's any affection or mercy. It says, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. It doesn't say just because you're for, for Brady on Sunday that, you know, that you're that bad. Okay? You know, honey, the like-minded there doesn't mean be like in your opinions. Mm -hmm. The like-minded is having the mind of Come Christ, having on. your mind renewed Come on. and having your mind set on God. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interest of others. Pooh. The Amplified says in verse four, let each of you esteem and look upon and be concerned for, for not merely his own interest, but also on the interests of others to where you can help people. You can help other people. Amen. You know, I just want to say that, you know, we're preaching to ourselves uh, that we uh, don't always have it together as well. And so we are learning and growing. And so we just want to give to you what we are learning. And uh, it's, it's, it's just good, you know, straight from the throne of God. You know, we, we always, we teach about raising children. And one of the things that, that they, they always say, which is absolutely the truth, is, you know, don't dishonor your child by being harsh and negative all the time. Okay. It's like if you have if you have a teenager, they can have some different ideas about some things than maybe what you have. And yelling and arguing with them doesn't change it. Doesn't make it any better. And what you have to do is you have to sit down and and have discussions. And if they don't think the way you don't say, "Well, you're nuts. That's crazy." <laughs> You start asking, wisdom would say, why, well, tell me, why, why do you feel that? Or why do you think that way? What brought you to that conclusion? And you listen to what they have to say, and then you don't still say, well, that's absolutely wrong. Well, have you thought about this? Have you looked into this? Have you thought about this idea? Okay. And you begin to dialogue and have discussion and and you can you begin to see things where they're like you're not always challenging them you're not always picking on them okay mm -hmm. but you're trying to correct them in a loving way by if you hear the truth sometimes a light will go on and they'll go whoa okay yeah I never thought of that I never thought of that okay and and as I was thinking about it tonight is. Well, that's the way we are with other people sometimes. They may not be our children, but being negative all the time, being harsh all the time is, is not going to communicate anything praiseworthy and it's not going to help anything. Amen. Yes. And, and so we need to, to accept, accept each other and work on getting to know each other better. And, you know, they may never vote like you. Okay. It's a free world. They're allowed to have their own opinion on that, okay? But, you know, uh, we need to really speak speak truthfully with one another, have compassion with one another, okay? It's like the scripture talks about, you know, if, if this person uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't believe in, in eating meat and wants to just eat vegetables, you know, well, then don't you go eat meat in front of them and offend them or whatever. You try to be considerate, okay? So we need to have some consideration with one another and work together, amen? That's good, honey. So, and the bottom line is it's it's treating others honorably, honorably. And uh, uh, it it it's not easy to do all the time because we've been taught differently. And so... Now we have to look and go, okay, you know, and, and I'm going to tell you what, there's people that may have thought differently than, than I did, but I've got to know some people that are really, really some awesome people and glad, I'm glad they're my friends, okay? And, and uh, we don't agree with everything that they say or do, okay? But, you know, uh, we're gonna we're gonna convert them, okay? We'll just, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this whole thing with honoring one another, and and uh, you know, there's a book by uh, uh, Danny Silk, "The Culture of Honor," which is a great book, 
and there's a lot of great things in there that that you can learn from and uh, but you know if we can honor one another okay cuz sometimes what let me just let me just come out here and let me just say this sometimes in in church leadership okay it's like whoever's the head you know they're they're screaming for honor and respect and everything else but really you know whoever's the greatest is supposed to be the servant okay so if the leader has concern for the people and are responsible for the people that they're over to to help them to grow and 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 become more like Jesus and and have wisdom in their life and and promotion in their life and all of that if they'll do that they'll get honor it comes naturally amen Yes, it's like what uh, we did leadership training last weekend and <coughs> I mentioned it to our leaders. So there was, what, 2025 20, in the room uh, at that time. But some of you have not heard this, but the Lord had spoke to me about what a servant leader really is. And that is uh, when Jesus spoke to his disciples, they were trying to figure out who is the greatest. Mm -hmm. They wanted honor, you know, they, they wanted to be seen. They wanted honor. And Jesus said, whoever's going to be the greatest, you must be the servant of all. And the time of that, uh, uh, of being a servant was you were seen and not heard. You see, because I was telling uh, Pastor Larry the other day, I said, you know, if everyone was supposed to be a servant as what as sometimes we get this in, in our mindset, is that um, uh, if he was meaning being a servant um, in the natural sense, then Jesus, when he approached Mary and Martha, he would have went with Martha to serve the food and to mm -hmm. do all of that. But what did he say? Mary chose the better part, mm -hmm. you see. So servant leadership is that you do it without honor, you do it without being seen. And when you have that right heart attitude, then honor does come. And the scripture also says, let another one praise you, not yourself, you see. So, um, it, you know, it's all part of honoring and loving people and appreciating them. And mm -hmm. so having that right heart posture of a servant is great. Amen. You know, and... and you know, we're supposed to honor one another and and you honor even in giving, okay? Giving time, uh, you know, buying someone's lunch, giving gifts, whatever, it's honor. And the Bible also talks about honoring your wife, okay? It says dwell with them with understanding, okay? Guess what, guys? They're not like you, okay? They're not like you. They're never going to be like you, all right? So you have to have a little compassion, a little little bit of give and take there. And guess what? You're not going to be like us either. Yes, I know that. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. Glory to God. All right. Hallelujah. No, there's no he, she's here. We're, we're all, <laughs> you're a male. I'm a female. <laughs> but let me, let me close it up with this and it, and. And, you know, also the scripture talks a lot of places. I'm just going to bring up one about honoring the Lord. Okay. When you honor the Lord, when you honor the Lord, you value him. Mm -hmm. it shows respect. Okay. Verse 9 of Proverbs 3 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. I mean, that's a promise from the word of God. Mm -hmm. When you honor God, he takes care of you. He takes care of you. You know, we don't give to get, but we, if, if you truly honor God, when you give your tithes, offerings, whatever, God looks and says, I see that. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you big time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Amen. I think we've we've honored men. I think we've we've brought the horse back to the corral. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm glad you 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 
were in here tonight with us, and uh, I pray that that it helps you. I, I know it's probably going to challenge many people, but I just really pray that that the strength of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, that God would do a work in each one of us and take our love walk to a no, whole new level, mm-hmm. a whole new level, a whole new level. In Jesus' name, yes, Amen. So I pray that mm. that as you sleep on your bed tonight, you get up tomorrow, you're going to say, you know what? I'm going to purpose in my heart to do something today to help someone else. I'm going to show love to somebody else. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm going to forgive. Mm. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And... If you need to, if, you know, if, if you've had a, a rift with someone, you know, and they know it, <laughs> you had words with them, sometimes you got to call them and just say, hey, man, I'm sorry. Didn't understand. Okay. Now, if you've had something in your heart, but they don't know about it, it's between you and God. Take care of it. Fix it. You don't have to call them and they're going to go, what? You had something against me? If they didn't know about it. It's all right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. God is love. Yes, Diane, remember the cards that you had? Yes. Yes. So we love you all. We pray that you were blessed, encouraged tonight. Mm-hmm. Honor all men. Amen. And we'll see you Sunday. See you Sunday. Be on YouTube live at 10 a.m. Yeah. Pastor Harold's bringing the word this weekend. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. Go Chiefs, go Chiefs, go Chiefs. (laughs) Okay, now that's your opinion. That's my opinion. Well, I can can root for the Chiefs. (laughs) You want to root for Brady? That's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, God bless you guys. (laughs) (laughs) We better get off here. (laughs) Bye. Bye.